Knowing what we now know about the Genesis figure and the power behind it, let's take a look at what custom characters actually are and how Victoria comes to be and what's so different about her and the Genesis base figure in any of the figure generations. I have two figures here in my viewport. One is in fact the Genesis base figure, the Genesis 8 base figure on the left, and I have Victoria on the right. These are just grey, they're the so-called dev loads here. If you go into your smart content and you find the Genesis 8 starter essentials, you'll find these grey figures here. And those are the dev loads. They come without eyelashes and they come without skin textures and clothing creators use them to make sure their clothing fits and character creators use them to take a look at geometric features without getting distracted by skin textures because that's a whole nother level that we're going to learn about slightly later in this course. So, but a custom character is really made of a body shape, like a morph, a delta, that is a derivative of the geometry of this figure here, of the Genesis base figure, both male or female. And that is what we can see here. And then the second part is, in fact, a set of skin textures that is applied around it, and that makes each character look unique in regards to skin detail and skin shade and so forth. But why do these two characters look different? I mean, they are both female, I can tell that, but she has a lot more detail on her body here, and the facial shape is different, and you know, they're just, they're, they're just different. So what I've done here is I've loaded in this character, which is that, and then I've duplicated her, moved her slightly over to here, and then I've literally cranked up one slider that's called Victoria 8, and that's turned my Genesis base female into Victoria 8. I've just renamed her in the scene tab. Let me show you where that is. That's on the parameters tab with my Victoria 8 figure here selected on the right hand side. I'm going to go and show you the whole thing. Just a quick recap. These sliders and the hierarchy works the same across any functionality in DAS Studio. We've got the top node here, so to say, that shows me in the right hand side here literally every slider that is available under this section. So if I go further down under general, then this list gets shortened to anything that's just condensed to the general section. Then if I go and expand that, then I'll see things like transformations, which whittles this list down even further. In there, I could go and say, show me only the translations, then that whittles this list even further down. And it just gives me a filter option so that I see less options and the ones I want to focus on. I also have my search field here up there for which I need to select one of the higher nodes here so that all of that can be searched. Essentially, that's how this works. So if we close down general and let me focus your attention on the actors tab here, there's there's several others here that have pose controls. That's a whole nother level. We're talking about that later. For now, let's have a look at actor, open up actor and have a look under these three things here. There's people, full body and head. There's other things here like hands and feet and chest and arms and so forth. They all contain controls like slider controls that will change portions of our body according to morph targets. If I just go and select the first one here, I can even open that up and whittle it down into further options here. I'll just leave the top thing selected and I can see a long list of characters that I've got here. And if I get to here, I can see Victoria 8. I could also find her by just searching for her. And you can see that Victoria 8 is dialed up to 100% right now. So if I go and dial her down, like left click and drag, I can see that Victoria 8 gets less and less visible. And as I turn the slider down to zero, it is in fact an exact duplicate of the, of the other character on the left hand side. And that's really how simple and exciting and how powerful it also is. Now, as I move my slider here, there's something we'll talk about more in the next section. You can see that as I left click on the slider, my figure changes ever so slightly. And when I go and let go of the mouse, then something kind of seems to pop. I'll zoom in to show you this in more detail, perhaps on the head here. As I go and do that, left click and drag, and you can see something gets a little chunky here. And if I go and let go of the mouse, it goes and pops back into something much smoother. That is the subdivision that is being applied. We'll talk more about this in the next part. Just for now, if you don't want this feature to happen as you drag your slider and this popping into place, if you can't really stand that, then have a look at the draw settings tab. Remember, this is a context sensitive menu that depends on which viewport you have selected. So currently I have filament. So that is the change I'm going to make here under general 
under manipulation, I've got something that is called the subdivision updates. And by default, they're set to delayed. And that is so that your computer doesn't have to work with as much geometry as you make changes so that you can preview them faster. And once you're okay with it, once you let go of the mouse, it kind of pops the subdivision back into place. But if you don't want that, you can switch this from delayed to continuous. And then as I go and move my slider around again, then I can go and left click and drag and there's no change in my figure. Some computers really don't like this and they struggle a lot and you can barely see the figure moving as you drag a slider. So be careful with that. I might just leave it on for now. Just uh, be aware of that feature. So this is how I can turn my base Genesis female into a Victoria 8 figure and back and forth. I don't have to do this to 100%. I can also mix her into 50%. If I like the shape in principle, I just want to have 50% of her done. I can do that. And I can bring in maybe another figure, like for example, the next one down here, Josie. If I go and mix her in, then Victoria and Josie are being mixed together into this mishmash of two figures. If I go and dial Victoria out, I only have the Josie figure. And once again, it looks completely different than the Genesis base figure. Isn't that amazing? And the clothing that will be on the figure will automatically follow. So that's kind of the big, big secret and the powerful feature of the Genesis figure. Notice though that no matter which body morph I dial in, I have a change both on the body as well as the head. So right now, if you look just at the head here, it changes into something that is no longer the Genesis base female head. They both look different now. Usually that is split out that you have. So the slider that we're using on the people section here that uses both the head and the body, but they are split out, which is why these other two sections are so important, namely the full body and the head section here. So those are there so that you can dial in the head morph independently from a body morph and vice versa. So if you're creating your perfect custom character, you might want to mix and match the body shape, but you might want to have individual control over what happens in the head. And that is what this is designed for. So if I open up the head and then head over here into people, then I have the same sliders as I had before and more. And if I wanted to just look for, say this Teen Josie is down here. If I go and just look for Victoria, because this is an awful long list here. So let me go and search for Victoria. There it is, Victoria 8 head. If I go and left click and drag that now, I can see that the head changes from basic female into the Victoria figure, but the body stays exactly as it was before. And once again, you can do this to 50% or 20% or whatever percentage you like. That's under the head section. Let me show you the same under the body section. So I'll go and close head down just so that we don't get lost in all the detail here. So there's full body here. If I go and open that up, then I have many other sliders here like body builder and weight. And those are all morph targets. So I can go and can add a bit more weight to my characters here. That is possible. I think these, these red ones here, they're actually from the Genesis 8 body morphs package. I think the grayer ones here you'll probably have by default, like bodybuilder, that probably exists, as well as pair figure here. They're all kind of color coded. Um, bodybuilder size. So you can literally go and mix and match any of these sliders and build your dream character. And then if you go and look further down, once again under people, you'll probably find Victoria again. Probably easy if I just go look for her. Victoria, there it is, Victoria's body, left click and drag, and that makes her body, but leaves her face intact. Very exciting. So you can already see, you can have hours and hours of fun. As you would have guessed, all these other sections down here, head, hands, feet, chest, arms, and so forth, they all contain morph targets for particular areas of the body. And if you want to change a particular aspect of your character, go ahead and change something in there. If you're not quite sure where to look, I recommend the search function. So if you wanted to change something about the fingers, for example, and you don't really know where you want to start looking, just type in um, finger in my case, and then you'll see all some of these sliders here. Don't worry about the emptiness of this list here. You'll see that some of these categories are dark gray and some of them are light gray. So it looks like I have nothing under chest or feet, which is why I wouldn't expect fingers to be, but I have something under hands and I've got something under head. So I only search for F-I-N, so that might not necessarily be finger. So if I go and finger, then under head, I find nothing anymore. But under hands, I find something. So wherever things are light gray, you will find whatever you've been looking for. And anything that's dark gray isn't there at all. This is a powerful menu. Get used to it because all aspects of Dash Studio work with this type of hierarchy somehow.
If you've dialed in something and you'd like to know what have I actually just done, because I don't really know, maybe you've got your custom character in place and you think, I'd really like to see a list of what has currently been dialed in. So if I were to go back and I'll say, maybe I'll use a little bit of Evelyn and I'll use a little bit of Zalara and I'll maybe use even a little bit of Olympia. And let's say this is now my custom character, even though I would strongly recommend we work on the head. But I don't really know where I've dialed things in on. You can always go to the currently used category up here. And when you go to this, you'll see a list of anything and everything that is dialed in. So that is both the heads at the bottom, as well as the bodies, as well as anything that DAS Studio felt necessary to adjust. In addition to that, something like morph control morphs, MCM and JCMs. Those are, those are other properties that are not actually shown by default in this list here. If ever you needed to access those, there's this thing here under preferences, show hidden properties. Properties. Just you know, just make a mental note. This is there. If I do, if I go and enable that, you can see this list goes on and on and on with grayed out sliders that we're not really supposed to dial in. This is just there so that Das Studio can make adjustments. Like if you move a particular portion of your character and Das Studio needs to dial in another morph to make that look believable, then that'll be a joint control morph, and that's hidden. We don't touch those, but they're being dialed in as we do other things, and that's what these hidden properties are. Just in case you've ever heard of them, usually you head over to preferences and disable that but sometimes in rare occasions you may have to enable that option just to find something that you're looking for yes but currently used this is a list of everything that we have so in my case if i say i wanted the evelyn character out of here i can just go alt left click on this slider and then this is the figure minus evelyn this is the figure now minus olympia and i'm left with a little bit of zalara kind of neat huh there's also favorites here. While we're talking about this menu, just so that you've heard of it, favorites are these little heart icons here. I'll just go back to my people and I'll go and say Victoria 8 might be my favorite. Then I can hover over the slider. And as I do that, there's this little heart icon here, just in the middle of the lock icon and the little gear icon. here. If I click that, then I turn this morph into my favorite morph. And as a result, it'll show up here. If I click favorites, then anything that I've favorited will show up in this list. So it could be multiple morphs that will show up here. And if you unfavorite them, then you know that morph disappears. Note that this isn't going to get saved unless you save your scene. So this is not saved to the central database. So they're not like bookmarks or anything. It's just that when you're browsing through your current session and you think, hey, I'm going to work with this, this, this and that, you can search for these things, mark them as favorites and then work with them from here if you want to do that. Just another little tip that I can give you there. So that's really what custom characters are. They are the basic Genesis figure, either male or female. Male morphs, by the way, don't work on the female figure and the female morphs don't work on the male figure. They only work for the figure they were designed with. So a custom character is that character preset dialed in plus a skin texture. And that is essentially a combination of what we get loaded when we go and search for somebody like uh, Victoria here in the content library. If we go and double click her, then this is exactly what happens. The Genesis figure is loaded, the base figure, a morph is being dialed up, a skin texture is being loaded, and that is that. But there's nothing really stopping us from mixing and matching these things together. So if you already have five figures installed and you want to make one custom character out of a mixture of all of them, then go ahead and do that with the parameters that I've just shown you here. Oh yeah, also important thing I've forgotten to mention, these sliders will show up if you install one of these products like Team Josie is showing up here because I have that as a product installed. The moment I uninstall that, the slider will go away. And the same is true for the skin texture. So the more sliders you have here, the more content you have installed. If ever you wanted to clear that out, then you need to uninstall content. Or if it's installed to multiple libraries, you need to unmap those for them not to show here anymore. There's an important consideration to be made, like I said before. If you have a lot of content, I recommend not installing it all in the same runtime because it might then take literally 10 or 20 minutes for you to load just the basic figure. And that is really not a situation you want to be in. Same is true for other morph products like the body morphs that we've seen here in the full body category like pair figure and all that. Those are all products that you can install from the DAS store and you can also uninstall them with Install Manager if you no longer want to see them. Just one last note before I leave. Do you remember the shaping tab that we closed in the very beginning? If you're into larger icons, you might want to look into that. I personally don't use it because I can access all these values that I've shown you here in the parameters tab. Just know that it's there. I just wanted to show you what happens if I bring it back 
under viewport panes shaping, we have this tab. And if I just go and dock it right here just for a second, I'll go and close it down in a minute. This has slightly larger icons that you might find more palatable for your characters. So this lets you go and just dial in other body shapes with a slightly different representation. Know that it has all the other attributes that we've already been through, just slightly larger icons in some parts, not in others. So it has the same representation that we see on the parameters tab. It just has a slightly different visual representation. And if you wanted an extra tab for that, you can certainly use it. It has actor, it has full body, it has people. You know, so this is now Bridget and this is now Charlotte, for example. And if you find that helpful, then you can use it. I personally don't, but you know, you can access all the attributes about the character on the shaping tab, as well as on the parameters tab. Have a look into that. Just thought I'd let you know. We're going to see a lot more of these sliders as we work with our custom characters and as we work with making our own figures and making portraits with them to our specifications. In the next episode, we're going to have a closer look at those mysterious subdivision surface updates that we keep hearing about and how we can use them to our advantage and also how we can disable them as we work with the figure. Stay tuned for that.